Well, first of all, how, how was quarantine? How did you go coping with uh, training in such an enclosed space? It's tough. It's, uh, it's not something I want to do regularly, but uh, ultimately it's something that to keep everybody else safe and uh, make sure that you don't bring the virus in. It's, it's something you have to do. The club were great. They gave me an exercise bike, which I feel like I'm ready for the Tour de France now. Um, but listen, it, it's something you've got to do and to keep fit. And uh, I was able to do that pretty, pretty nicely uh, in the two weeks. Patrick said he had a bike as well. Did you guys count your pays or do any competition in there? Andy, Andy was sending sessions in every day that you had to do, and um, which was fine because you haven't got much else to do, to be fair. So uh, all you can do is get on the bike and do your weight sessions and wait for your food to come. And were, you, were you there by yourself? Or did yeah. You have your, or you yeah, on my own. So, I mean, the first three days are, are pretty tough because of the jet lag and stuff. Uh, you wake up at you know, four or five in the morning and then the day just gets dragged out a lot longer than, than normally. Uh, but once you get your sleep pattern right, um, you're normally pretty good. Um, and how did you pass the time? Was there any Netflix movies or TV shows? Or yeah, completed Netflix again. Uh, <laughs> com completed YouTube and, uh, <laughs> and everything else. So yeah, it, it's, it literally is uh, like do my A license stuff, my coaching stuff, do, I'm doing a masters, so doing that sort of stuff as well. So it's just uh, just trying to keep your mind busy, really. So you're doing your coaching course as well. Yeah. Is that um is that something you hope you can do in Australia, like maybe do a coach here, or do you want to go back to? Uh, I don't know. Depends on what the club decide like after next season. Um, depends, I guess, how well I do, really. Um, if if they want me to stay, if they want me to stay, then great. If not, um, you know, look to to go somewhere else and do something else. Um, the coaching is just for something completely different um, after playing I'm you know I'm not finished playing yet so uh, it's just something that I thought you know coming to the, the latter stages of your career I think it's good to have a plan and um, and the coaching badges is part of that plan so it's, uh, it's just something to keep my mind occupied. When you have a new coaching mentor to learn from what have you what have your first impressions of Carl Robinson been? Yeah, I mean, I spoke with him when I was back in the UK, uh, and the conversation went really well. Liked what he said, um, and the first few days of being in here, we've had a, a decent relationship so far. So um, I think he just likes to see me running around the pitch more than anything. Um, so once we get into the football side of things, I'm sure uh, I'll start to learn a lot more in the way he wants to play. Um, and Patrick was saying he wants to play quite an attractive style of football. Has he conveyed a similar message to you going forward? Yeah, I think we'll be, obviously we'll be very fit. We'll be, uh, I think it'll be high intensity, uh, which is good because the higher up the pitch you, you win the ball back, gives strikers more opportunities to score goals. So that'll be interesting. That'll be good for, for the likes of myself and the strikers here. Um, I'm just looking forward to it. It's, you know, new manager, new ideas, uh, and we see how we go. But I asked as well, you were brought here by Marcus Barbell, didn't play a game like no. then, then had John Paul Dean Marini, and then I have Carl Robinson. Um, I hope he lasts a little bit longer than everybody yeah. else. Was it, um, was it a bit of a shock, I guess, to find out that, it, um, you know, that the manager changed again? Yeah, but I mean, listen, we're a football club that are hoping to, to make big strides this year, and and if changing the manager and, and the philosophy of the football club is, is part of that, that process, then that, that's what the football club decides. We're not a club that likes to stand still, so if we can, uh, if we bring a new manager in and, and we start getting the results, it'll be a, a justified decision. Um, there's been a bit of activity in the transfer market, someone you know quite well, Graham Doran, so what do you think he can bring to the club? Yeah, listen, I play with Dozer at West Brom and if, he, uh, if we get the player that he was at West Brom, listen, we've got a really uh, one hell of a player on our hands here. Um, someone very creative, someone box-to-box -box midfielder, someone who can you know, score goals, um, which we need from midfield as well. Um, so once he gets in, gets settled, acclimatises and, uh, and, we can, and we can show his, uh, showcase his abilities, we'll... Uh, We'll be a better team with him in the team, 100%. Obviously, we're still early in pre-season, but you almost thinking this could be like the final piece of the puzzle to get the Wanderers a championship push. Yeah, listen, I think ultimately we're we're a squad of players and we we need help. Like so, whoever whoever comes in is is being brought in to to help the squad. So if if he comes in and helps us, that's great. I'd imagine that he's probably not the final piece. Um, 
but whoever else comes in will be here to, to make the squad better, to make the team a better team and hopefully get us uh, pushing up the top end of the table. What, what are the goals this season? Obviously haven't been finals for a couple of years. Is that, is that the goal going forward this year? Listen, uh, the only goal for us is to improve on last year, so 100% we have to be looking minimum into the playoffs um, because otherwise I, I would see that and I imagine everybody at the club would see that as a failure. So, um, And I guess that's one of the reasons why the manager's been brought in is uh, to make those strides up the top of the table um, and start challenging the, the top boys, the, you know, the Melbourne Cities and the Sydney FC. So uh, once we... Once we sort of stamp our authority on the training pitch and get our, our patterns of play and our philosophy across, we uh, and we can start looking forward to the games and start winning winning games of football. You mentioned Sydney FC before. Just um, you told me before you're still undefeated against them. Do you <laughs> hope you can continue that dominance? Yeah, listen. If we can continue that, that'd be great. And I, if I can leave here undefeated against Sydney FC, I'll be more than happy. And just one more to end. Um, obviously, there's been a few foreigners who have left the FBA over the summer. What over the winter? Um, what, is, is it a big show of faith that you've been brought back to this club and it shows that you know, they really want you going forward? And yeah, listen, I think I was, it was never in doubt that I was going to come back. Uh, listen, people, individual circumstances, you have to look after yourselves, look after your families and make sure that whatever the decision you make is the right one for yourself. Um, and we decided to stick together uh, as a group and we're going to continue doing that all through the season. So if that... Uh, People make, like I say, individual decisions and, and they want to go and earn as much as they can for because it's a short career, so they go and seek uh, pastures new somewhere else in the world. So good on them and, and uh, good luck to them because ultimately we, we become a better team. The fact that other teams have weakened and we've, uh, we're strengthening. Thank you. Well, good luck for the season. Cheers.